Welcome inside the historic palestra on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. My name's Christina Chauvenet here alongside my friend Sam Marshall. So excited to commentate the Ivy Classic. All four teams that have gymnastics in the Ivy League competing here, taking a look at the lineup. And Sam, it's going to be a great night of gymnastics. I am super excited. The Ivy League has been strong this year, and I'm just excited to see a night of great gymnastics. Absolutely. And, you know, taking a look te at team by team here, Penn, are the hosts, they are certainly the favorite to win this meet. They're ranked 45th in the country, number one among Ivy programs, NQS 194-945, season high 195-5. You see them warming up there on bars. Little change from what you're used to seeing at home meets. They are starting on bars. The team that hosts Ivies in the following year gets Olympic order. So this year that will be Cornell. But certainly, Sam, Penn coming in as a favorite. What do you like about Penn from what you've seen this season? I like that they're really even across all four events. They have strong scores on all four events. They, I love their floor, but they really are able to keep up and keep the pace on all, all four events. Absolutely, I agree. And let, let's turn to the defending champions, Brown. And I know that you have really enjoyed watching their artistry on floor. Tell us about what we can expect from Brown. Absolutely, I'm super excited to see Brown. And we're gonna start with them on beam, which is another great event for them. Lots of interesting skills and great composition. Then they're gonna head to floor for some great artistry, beautiful routines. And then they'll turn to bars and what they need to maybe defend their title today, stay on those bars and hit those bars routines. And getting a look at Brown's warm up on beam. Agree with you. I love the variety they have in their lineup as well. Yale will start on floor and Yale coming off not their best meet there this previous weekend, but two weeks ago, second highest pro score in program history, just hit a 195. What do you what do you think about Yale as floor as a starting place for them? Absolutely. I think floor is a great starting place for them. Also one of their strongest events. So if they can just settle in, get a great floor score to start, then that can put them in a great position for this meet. That 195 score, which is their season high, is a really competitive score within this uh, grouping. So I think if they can get started well on floor, then they can have a good night ahead of them. I agree, and always exciting to watch. All these teams have really strong floor teams. Cornell, as I mentioned, getting that Olympic order as they are hosting next year. It's not their strongest event, but it means that they'll be able to end on floor and beam their two strongest events. And they did struggle on beam last weekend. Coach Melanie Holm told me mistakes happened. She's not overly worried about one meet. This team also set the program record, 49.025, in a meet I commentated earlier this season. So maybe I'm their good luck charm. Who knows? Um, but they're led by Sydney Beers, one of the favorites, certainly, to win the all-around competition. And she's an absolute rock star on vault. Super excited to see her on floor as well. Super strong, great high tumbling passes and really just going to be someone fun to watch. Tonight. Agree. And we're just getting set here, taking a look at, as I mentioned, Cornell. We are going to have all four events going simultaneously. So we're going to work to bring you as much gymnastics as possible. And looks like we're just waiting. And I think our first athlete from Cornell on vault is ready to go, Addie Rothstein. Yurchenko full, wasn't the landing she wanted, kind of gave it away at her face there, but I was impressed with how she managed to rebound and keep that to her feet. Absolutely, we have Hannah Strauss starting here on floor, and she's a beautiful performer. I hope we'll get to turn to her in a moment. You can hear her music in the background. And there we go, our quad box catching up with Hana on floor. Very nicely controlled, well stuck on that front tuck. For Brown on beam, we have Liza Marcus getting started. And Isabel Song will get things started for Penn on bars. Just does such a great job of starting off this Yale lineup with beautiful execution of her leaps and a really clean floor routine. So I'm extremely excited to see how she gets this whole competition started. Song getting started here. And not 
quite the dismount that Liza might have wanted. She does that one and a half um, and can't stick it, steps forward, but a really nice routine on the beam for her and a good start for Brown. And solid opening routine here for Penn. Sinks her heels in, gets the stick. That's the way they wanted to start this competition. Very good. Glad to see her hold that one second and make sure that she doesn't get any deduction on that landing. And a good routine for Hana as well. A little short on that last double pike, but cleanly through. Avery B on here. Front tuck half, such a cool vault. Nine, nine, five start. She's alternated between the front tuck and the front tuck half this season. And uh, the coach Melanie Hall told me just depends on how she's feeling when she warmed up. Little chest low on the landing, but I love to see that variety in the lineup. It's always fun to see a different vault. Absolutely. And one that's upgradable, you know, already a 995 start. Of course, Haley Bryant famous for that front pike half. Um, and maybe we could see that in her future. And you see uh, here for Brown uh, will be Lauren McEwen uh, getting ready for Bean. An early score coming in, Addie Rothstein, 9375 there to get Cornell started on vault. You know, that low chest position did hurt her score. Carly Oniki up next for Penn on bars. Liza Marcus, 9.75 to get Brown started on beam. And here goes Lauren on beam. And Megan Bruick going to get started on floor for Yale. Nice backhand spring layout step out. Like to see a little more extension in the feet, but really, really clean on the landing. Yeah, very precise. And this routine from Megan is very fun. It's very different than Hana's routine, and I love that variety in this lineup. And Oniki getting set, getting going here. Nice double tuck there, just steps out into that lunge. And unfortunately, Lauren comes off on that side aerial. Just looked like she wasn't straight on the beam. Double layout there for Carly Oniki. Just a couple of form issues throughout that routine, but another hit for Penn. And if you saw, there was just a fall on floor as mm. well for Megan Brooks. She just didn't get enough punch. Yeah. Callista Brady on vault for Cornell. Brady, an individual qualifier on USAG's last year on vault. Oh, just didn't get the block she needed there on that Yurchenko half. And another tough landing there for Megan, comes out of bounds and can't get that uh, jump she was trying to do right out of it. So for all three of these teams, it'll be, you know, the next four athletes will really need to hit their routines and, you know, uh, in college gymnastics, you have one drop, so uh, <laughs> let's. Yep, six up, five count. So some several of these teams facing some adversity early on here. Sarah Kenefek up next for Penn on bars. And I absolutely love to watch her on bars. I want our viewers to pay attention in particular to her dismount. Does a really cool full pirouette into a double full. Not a double layout, you didn't mishear that double full, really old school dismount that I enjoy seeing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really excited for Sherry Wang on floor. She's the Yale gymnast that we'll see next. She just performs so well. She's, you know, she's a senior. She's had a lot of time competing. And uh, I think everyone's just really going to enjoy this performance. Agree. I really enjoy watching her on floor. Cammy Whitaker up next for Cornell on vault. And for Brown on beam, you'll see Lauren Kramer. And watch out, she has an aerial back handspring combo series. Really different, really challenging. 
Tuck full there for Whitaker. Oh, just couldn't quite hold on to that stick, but nice dynamics. That's a 9-9 start the, compared to that layout full, which is a 9-9-5. And Lauren Kramer getting started here on beam for Brown. Sarah Kenefick. Some leg separation in that pack salto. There it is, that side aerial back handspring. Ah, and she holds on to it. She was definitely off center. And Kenefick through that, you know, I've seen her be cleaner on that bar routine, but I just love that flyaway double full. She really is a twister. We're gonna see that from her on floor as well. And I love this scale that we just saw from Lauren Kramer. So pretty. I love that she holds that releve at the end and really just very precise and beautiful. And we've got a little weight here on floor with the judges conference. And Michaela DeFrancisco getting ready to go on vault for Cornell. She's one of those athletes that can really get those superior dynamics on this vault. Just the dismount left for Lauren Kramer. And a stick held for more than one second on that one and a half. Would have loved to see a little bit more precision, but really, really uh, held on and made sure she stayed on the beam. A nice Yurchenko half there for DeFrancisco. That is valued at the same, 995 as the Yurchenko full. It's a little form in the air, but she really nailed that landing. Yeah, definitely their best vault so far. Really strong there. And some score updates for you. Penn, 97, 97 to start their rotation. I think we were talking about before how important bars was gonna be in this meet. And they're really, you know, getting started strong here on bars with those nine six plus scores. Oh gosh. Tough break for Gazdak there on bars for Penn. You jinxed her, Sam. I know, <laughs> commentator curse. I'm so sorry. And here's Sherry Wang on floor for Yale finally getting started. And you can see the uh, brown athlete, Angela Zing, dancing along to her floor music as well. And Sydney Beers, get ready, because she's about to put this Yurchenko full into the rafters. Gazdak getting started again on bars. Oh, doesn't quite stick it, but gosh, she gets great dynamics on that vault. And I hope you saw in that top right-hand corner, Angela Zing's uh, great series, super interesting. Again, one of these things I love about this Brown team is their interesting series and different combinations. Nice fight there on the latter half of that routine from Gazdak, though that is a routine they're gonna wanna drop. Nice leaps there from Angela Zing. She has really nice extension through her ankles. And a clean double tuck there for Sherry Wang. Finish up a good routine for Yale. And all wrapped on vault for Cornell. We are not, there will not be exhibitions tonight as it is that championship format. So they, we will not see any more routines on vault, but other three still going. And I'm glad we have this moment of calm before Sophia Paris goes because she is just a bar worker I've been so impressed with coming in really strong, beautiful lines. She's doing a chow. Oh for my our gosh, viewers. in college? I will, wow. exact, correct. <laughs> and as far as I know, um, and College Gym News or others might be able to correct me, I think she's the only athlete competing a chow in uh, collegiate competition and did you know Sam it's actually not named a chow it's conventionally called the chow but it never formally got named after Amy Chow I'm not really sure what the history there is there were some people before her that competed it and I'm not sure who the first person was but conventionally known as a chow and what that is is a straddle version of that common Maloney we see and she does it so well she does stalter work as well so really likes that stalter work on bars 
Yeah, I can't wait to see this. That's really exciting. And by the way, it's only value to D, which I would like to say that should be an E, NCAA Technical Committee, if you're listening. This is uh, Jessica Lynn getting started for Brown on beam. And also for Yale, this is uh, Chloe DeJoy. Ooh. And here's that chow, so wow. cool. And Jessica really fought for that landing. Mm. She was, she had her leg up, but she held on to the beam. And really nice series there. A little labored in that full pirouette, but makes the connection to the double back. She's so pretty to watch on bars. And Chloe setting up for her pass here. Really clean combo pass there. Nice layout. She gets a good stretch position. You really want to see that stretch position as opposed to some athletes who really try to arch that over. She gets a nice uh, punch out of her full to do that uh, laid out position. And a cartwheel tucked one and a half. Nice landing, a step. She'll definitely get a deduction for that, but really quite well controlled there at the end and a good fight for Jessica Lynn on beam. And DeJoy, so pr pretty twisting form. Absolutely. She's really, really got nice technique. And next up on floor, we'll have one a routine that I've been waiting for, which is uh, Gigi Sabatini. She's just really fun, and um, I'm, I think you'll enjoy this routine a lot. And similarly, Sky Carico up in the anchor position for Penn. She's had such a dynamic sophomore season, certainly one of the athletes in the mix for the all around here. Absolutely, she has uh, scored in the last few weeks all over um, a 39-1, so definitely she could be in that conversation for the all around tonight. On beam we'll have Lindsay Yang, and she does one of my favorite skills ever in a nodi. Love it, I yeah, saw her warm that up and she's so pretty to watch on that skill. Rare to see that in college. Yeah, it's such a challenging skill, and when done well, it's so beautiful. And Sky Kiriko is about to <laughs> just fly off the handle here. She's got this big ray release right off the top. Huge, wow. huge air time. Oh. Ooh. She's safe. <laughs> I love seeing athletes that cover up their, or Huge try to cover up their there. mistakes there. But uh, Lindsay Yang falls a little bit on that wolf turn and she sort of grabs it and comes around for her uh, scale. Will certainly be interesting to see. I would assume that the judges will call that a grab of the beam. Yeah. Uh oh, tough break. That means that unfortunately Brown will be counting a fall mm. on beam. Pretty double pike from Sabatini. And that'll do it for Penn on bars as well. And they made it through. They didn't have to count that fall. Absolutely. Gainer Pike off the end for Lindsay Yang. Just has to take that little hop. Really unfortunate to see that fall. Her work is so beautiful mm. and I really, I really enjoy watching her. So it's really upsetting when you see an athlete, you know, have to come off the beam for that. But certainly a lot of potential. Absolutely. This is Gigi Sabatini finishing up here. Very good routine for her. Yeah, maybe lacked a little bit of that uh, amplitude in her combination pass compared to what you were pointing out with DeJoy, but really solid. And you know, Yale does have a 875 they're trying to drop right now. So that routine really critical. Absolutely. So the pressure now is on 
freshman, Ella Tashton. It's her turn to, you know, close out this rotation, but she is really, really great. Even as a freshman, she is anchoring this lineup, and I, you know, I'm excited to watch her here. And just some score updates for you. And if you are a stats nerd, you can follow along on Verdius. You can get the full quad box. You can see what's going on. Uh, Penn is in the lead, 48-625. Uh, Cornell, 48-375. Brown, the score for Lindsey Yang not in yet. I don't anticipate that will count. So they're at 48-2 there. And then just seeing what Yale is going to do um, as they still have a one more routine left. Yes, absolutely. And I would recommend that you go check out the new Verdius uh, quad I'm scoring. It. It's really, really easy to follow. And uh, I think it's it's a great way to, you know, keep up with your stats while you're watching the quad box here. Tashjin as high as 9-9 nine, nine this season. So dynamic. And she does a big double pike here. Really nice. Big step back, but she showed so much power there. Nice layout position there as well. elevation on those leads. I'd like to see her point all the way through her toes, but she gets really good height and really good split position there. And gearing up for that last pass. Double tuck. Big hop back, but she stays on her feet, and that will certainly help uh, Yale to not have to count that 8-7-5 that we saw and close out their first rotation on floor. Yeah, that's, and that's all of the gymnastics for this first rotation. Tashjin, as you mentioned, coming in. They, I really have to commend Yale here because they had that adversity in the two spot. Every routine after that, nine, seven, two, five, or higher. And, I, you know, I think that that routine will come in around that number. What do you think, Sam? Absolutely. It really showed that they just put that behind them and kept moving forward. You know, this is a championship setup here, and this is, you know, good practice for as they go into their postseason as well. And, you know, as we take a look at these teams, again, Penn in the lead coming out of bars. They did have some adversity. Every single team in this first rotation had adversity, but Penn was the one that did not have to count a major mistake, and that really distinguished them from the rest of the group this rotation. Absolutely, and we'll be you know, waiting for a moment here to see what Yale's score is mm -hmm. as well, because they should also be um, in that sort of 48 uh, range, 48 something range that is, you know, really strong first yeah, rotation. And that will do it for rotation one. We will be back, lots of gymnastics left here, so don't go anywhere. You're watching College Gymnastics on ESPN+. And welcome back to College Gymnastics here on ESPN+. Plus. It's the Ivy Classic. You're inside the Palestra, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm your host, Christina Chauvenet, along with my co-host, Sam Marshall. Exciting first rotation, Sam. Some great routines, some adversity through these lineups. Penn in the lead, I think, not surprisingly, in the lead after one. Actually, Yale is in the lead. Oh, Yale. Oh, you yeah. are? You're absolutely correct. That score came in just before I said that. Yale in the lead <laughs> as they had that last score come in. Taking a look at Cornell on vault. You know, Cornell, I think they did. I've seen them be bigger on this event. Sydney Beers here, huge. Yurchenko full. Didn't quite get the stick, so 9-8 there, but she's certainly in the all-around hunt. And Penn, as I mentioned, just really worked through this 
Bar lineup wasn't the crispest I've seen from them there either, but a lot of fight from this team. Getting a look at Sophia Paris here, the stalter work into the double back and do it, does that chow at the beginning of the routine. So pretty. Absolutely. And here on beam for Brown, really nice stock one and a half there. One of their highlights from the rotation. Unfortunately, they did have to count a fall, which will put them in the back of this pack for the first rotation, but they are heading to floor. Um, and here is Yale on floor, our leaders after the first rotation. Some really beautiful gymnastics, um, great height on their tumbling passes, and just really beautiful dance, which put them in that first spot after this rotation. And Sherry Wang, as you mentioned, one of those athletes, Coach Andy Lee's told me she's doing her best gymnastics in her senior year. Really see her doing some confident work on floor there. Yeah, just incredible. And see Cornell warming up on bars there. We are rotating in Olympic order, so that means vault, bars, beam, floor. That is the direction that all of the teams will rotate in. So, yeah, Yale catches that lead with uh, they were able to drop their 875 from earlier in the rotation. So, a lot of fight from that Yale team. They are moving to vault, and Cornell will be on bars. You know, bars is an event that Cornell that has not been Cornell's best this season, and in fact, it's not most. It's not any of these teams' best event, uh, bars. But you know, they had a really solid showing at the meet last weekend in Long Island. So if they can put together a similar performance, they'll be happy for it. What's Yale looking to do on vault? just land these vaults on their feet. You know, Yale has good clean vaults. They have several full twisting Yurchenko vaults. So they just want to make sure that they can get the highest score, keep their chest up on those landings and try to minimize the landing deductions. Absolutely. And then Penn moves to beam, which has been a little bit up and down for them this season, but certainly very capable of breaking into the 49s we're going to take a quick break that's we'll be back for the beginning of rotation two college gymnastics really solid chest position and dynamics absolutely and uh, sherry wang will follow her on vault and she'll have that full twisting Yurchenko we were talking about before kirsten belkoff getting started for penn on beam and this is Lauren Kramer for Brown on floor. We didn't really have a chance to talk about Brown too much in the break, but they are a great floor team, and you will be excited to see all of these huge tumbling passes, particularly Julia Bedell that you'll see at the end of the rotation. Clean triple series there for Belkov. Very beautiful. And here's Sherry Wang on vault for Yale. Nice, Yurchenko full, good chest position, just a step back. And a very clean first pass there for Lauren Kramer as well. Natalia Tirani up next on bars for Cornell. Just the dismount left for Belkov. Just that step. Beautiful leap work for Lauren Kramer. That ring was really nice, good head release. And this will be Ella Tashjian on vault for Yale, the freshman. Tirana getting started here on bars. Nice double tuck for Lauren Kramer to finish that routine. Really clean landings to start Brown off. And a good full for Ella Tashjian. A little bit of legs in the air, but a nice landing, just a small hop. And very similar on bars. A little bit of legs in the air, but a nice landing. Yeah, just a, a, a couple of foreign places here and there for Tehrani, but really kept nice rhythm throughout that routine. A rare quiet moment here in the quad box. Sam, what's your favorite Leo of these four? Oh, I love this brown Leo. It's right in front of us yeah. as we're watching floor. Very, very pretty. But it's super pretty with the that crossed back and the very blingy front. <laughs> yes, and the nice B in the front. I really like that Leo. I have to say my favorite is Yale. I really like um, the front design there.
And this is Gigi Sabatini. Nice goal, big hop back there, but good position in the air. And Sarah Kenefek, sorry, Anna Kenefek on beam for Penn. Kenefek's go back to back on beam, so <laughs> gotta remember which one is in which place. And gotta pay attention and make sure you didn't close your eyes when one <laughs> dismounted. And Belkoff got them started 9 8 2 5. Great score. And this is Angela Zing on floor. I think she has really, really beautiful artistry. She does a whip to double tuck in the first pass. Really, really cool and different. And second triple series in a row for Penn on beam. Love the difficulty. Here's that whip to double tuck. Nicely Gorgeous. controlled. And this is Lily O'Coin for Yale. Oh, and I just could tell she didn't punch up off that, she didn't block off the table as well as she wanted to. Unfortunate fall there, but you know, the pressure will be on Megan Bruick to finish out that rotation strong. And Sydney Beers getting started here on bars as Kenefic wraps up. Doesn't quite get the stick, but pretty in the air with that one and a half. And a dive roll from Lindsay Zing. I just love a dive roll. Check out this dismount free hip to the front pike half. Nice. Just the step, but really cool dismount there. New for her this season. And a great double pike there for Angela Zing. That was a great routine. Very clean and a second strong floor routine for this Brown team. Like I said in the open, floor is their strong suit and they're already showing that off. Yeah, and she just had such great control in those passes, even in that whip to double tuck, which you sometimes see athletes struggle to get around. And this is Megan Bruick closing out the Yale rotation on vault. She'll want to stay on her feet so they don't have to count Lily O'Coin's score. But really solid vaults for Yale, aside from O'Coin. Absolutely. Nine, seven, and higher. Very good to keep that pace. And she does it, that handspring front pike, and she stays on her feet, and that should close out a really great rotation for Yale on vault. Yeah, that front pike starts from a 9-9. Nine, nine. And I thought, yeah, just some knee bend towards yeah. the end of that vault, but nice dynamics. Definitely, and a little hop forward. But, you know, she did what she needed to do for her team there. And I'm really excited about this next routine we'll see on the floor. This is Maya Davis. She is a beautiful dancer, and she just really elongates through her whole body, uses all the artistry, and... I just, I find her routine to be very special. Um, Agree, yeah, she's really pretty to watch and just a very different style to what you typically see in college gymnastics. Absolutely. Addie Rothstein next to go here for Cornell on bars. Double pike to get started. And just that beautiful extension in her dance. <laughs> nice double layout on bars there for Rothstein. Really nice. And Maya does a switch ring to switch ring half, which is an extremely oh. challenging combination, and not many gymnasts can pull it off the way she does. Nice, holding that position on that pass. You could tell she was almost a little bit back on that second element, but she really was patient with it and danced out of it. 
Sarah Kenefick getting started here. I love this mount. Really fun. And another leap combination for Maya. She really uses these leaps to help her, uh, get her uh, tenths, her bonus tenths there. Lovely ending for Maya and another great routine for Brown. I have, I literally have chills from that performance. Another triple series. Backhand so spring, back solid. Backhand spring, loud step out. <laughs> this is Ivy League gymnastics, folks. I really hope our viewers are appreciating the level of difficulty that these athletes are bringing to the table. Definitely. You don't see that many triple series in most meets. well through this routine. Morgan Shambo getting set to go here for Cornell on bars as Sarah Kenefick goes for the dismount. Just the hop forward, one and a half, same dismount as her sister, same series as her sister. Both really nice job there. Just a little form issue here or there, but they are really rocking and rolling over there on beam. Absolutely. Nice Jaeger there. Just a little shy on that bail to handstand, but keeps it moving. Shambo gearing up for the dismount. Step back, but nice dynamics on these double layouts. Absolutely, and this is Liza Marcus about to get started for Brown on floor. And Brown off to a great start too. A couple of nine eights and a nine seven seven five. Nice double tuck. A little bit less control than her teammates, but she really, you know, it stays patient with it and makes sure that she holds on to that landing. Mar getting set here on beam and she is stunning on this event. Look at the extension in Mar's back handspring layout step out. Just lovely. Gorgeous. I didn't want to talk too much through that Liza Marcus choreography because I think she commits so well and you should just be able to enjoy it. This is a great gymnastic side by side here. And you can see there what I was talking about before with that bit of an arch position on the lay. She still kept it on her feet, but she did have some knees and an arch position in her back. But a really good routine for her and another hit for Brown. Josie Moylan wrapping things up for Cornell here on bars. Maloney there. Just a little shy on that bail to handstand. Campbell Moore gets ready for the dismount. Wow, sticks it. She hasn't stuck during many of those this season. That's going to be a great score for Penn. Oh, and just couldn't quite hold on to that stick, but big full twisting double back there from Josie Moylan of Cornell. Definitely. We'll have Sophia Dewar here on floor for Brown. And 90, Yale in the clubhouse, well not the clubhouse, but the halfway clubhouse as it were, 97-6 halfway through. So they're having a great meet. Very good. Really strong ball rotation with every score counting 9-7 or higher. Yep. Sky Carico getting set to go here for Penn. And these teams are really putting out very comparable numbers. This is going to be exciting to watch because it's, it's still anyone's meet. Definitely. And here we have Sophia Dewar is going to get started on the floor. And yeah, we are wrapped on bars, so now just beam and floor left. Nice 
nice. And she does that combination pass first, a really clean landing. Good leap work there. She hits her 180 split. goes for this wolf turn. Nice job getting that around. And that double tuck in the second pass, maybe a little bit under rotated, but she really jumps out into that lunge and makes sure to cover up any issues in the landing. Nice leap there. Sky Carico getting set for her series here. I think her back foot was a little off, but just finesses that landing. And another clean routine for Brown for Sophia Dewar. That's five clean routines and, uh, you know, the icing on the cake coming here from Julia Vidal, who is a fantastic floor worker that we will see next. And Sky Carico just rocks that punch front. Just her one and a half left. Sinks her nice. heels in. Good for her. I'd love to see her grow this season. She really is coming into her own and, you know, was a solid contributor for Penn last year, but just looking great. So both Cor sorry, Cornell, both Penn and Brown, one routine left each year. And they're both in great places because they have all hits before them. So for Penn, you're looking at nothing lower than a 9775. Brown, same, nothing lower. Oh no, they do have a 97 and Duar on eval. So, you know, really solid routines. And as you say, Bedell is just, she's not one of the best floor workers in the conference. She's one of the best floor workers in the country. Absolutely. And she holds Brown's school record with a 995. She's hit that mark twice, and one of them was just last weekend. And the time she originally did it, I was commentating for her. <laughs> Truly an honor I am not worthy of, I will say. And she does this full in in the first pass. Just so dynamic. I'll step back a little bit and see if I can let you enjoy her routine. Controls that landing perfectly. Samantha Wu getting started after Carico 9875. Great leap work from Julia as well. She's not just a great tumbler, but she also has great extension on her leaps. We have a front tuck through to double tuck. Nice landing there as well. Two very hard passes, and she just rocks it through both of them. And Wu goes for the split. Cheap jump. Nice job of that head release. And wow, that was a fantastic routine from Julia. You can see why she is one of the best floor workers in the country. And another really nice routine for Wu on beam for Penn. They've already got a 49-1-5 in the clubhouse. So that's only going to go up from there. I imagine that will replace a Ken FX 9775. Wow. But great, great rotation there. And that's all of the gymnastics we have here. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Ivy Classic College Gymnastics on ESPN+. And welcome back inside the palestra on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. Christina Chauvenet alongside the one and only Sam Marshall. Always fun to call a gymnastics meet with you, Sam. And we saw some phenomenal gymnastics in rotation two. Let's start with Penn. They took over the lead from Yale, 49-275 on beam. Take a look at Yale on vault. 
Yeah, they were solid. 48-8 on vault and not counting any scores below a 9-7. Really, really clean work from Yale. And getting a look at Cornell here. Cornell not in that quite as high scoring threshold, 48, 4, 5, but they did their job. This is not their best event. I think they're going to be happy with how they ended it. Getting a look at Sydney Beers here. Come on. This is so cool. The front toe on front pike half. Super fun. Love to see it. Certainly in the hunt for the all around because she can go big on floor. Absolutely. And Penn Beam, I mean, they just, first of all, they have so many of these triple series. Kirsten Belkoff getting them off to a great start there with that triple series. And Sarah Kenefek here, back handspring, back handspring, layout step out, really nice height on that series and just went no score lower. They got to drop a 9775. Brown on floor, lights out as well. Just absolutely amazing. You know, Angela Zing here started things off with that great, great landing. And here she is, Miss Julia Vidal with a 9925. Amazing full in there, just so well controlled. Absolutely love to see that 9925 for her, 49 1 for that rotation. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back for rotation three of the Ivy Classic on ESPN. And welcome back inside the Palestra in Philadelphia on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. Christina Chauvenet, Sam Marshall bringing you all the action here. We're about to get started with rotation three. And for rotation three, we'll have Brown on vault, Yale will be on bars, Cornell will be on beam, and Penn will be on floor. Sam, you know, we talked about the great rotations really across the board. Penn taking back, the, taking the lead, I should say, from Yale. Yale really close on their heels, though. 97-9, 97-6 is Yale, 97-3 Brown, 96-825 Cornell. So getting a look at Cornell on beam there, and I got to say, I absolutely love to see Cornell on this event. They have a lot of variety in the lineup. They broke their beam record earlier this season. I didn't mean I was commentating. So again, I don't know, maybe I'm good luck charm for some of these folks, but um, really nice to see them. And you know, Sam, we talked about how great Yale did on vault. They are moving to bars, which has been an up and down event for them this season. So what are you looking for from them here? Absolutely. I'm looking for them to stay clean, stay on their feet and stay on the bars. In, on bars, you really want to see those handstands straight up and down uh, and no deviation from that vertical angle. And you really want to see everyone keep their legs together on those release moves. And getting a look at Brown on vault there, they're coming off of a super strong vault, a floor rotation. They're hoping to carry that momentum to vault. Absolutely. They really, you know, put that beam rotation behind them, hit floor strong, and now they've got to hit vault if they want to, you know, stay in the hunt for the win here. And Julia Bedell getting a look at her there. It, you know, she's the leader at the moment on floor with that big 9925. Certainly could take the title on vault as well. Definitely. And she, as we were talking about before, is you know, nationally is a great uh, floor athlete too. And as we're looking towards the postseason, this 9925 will be another helpful score in her NQS uh, to be able to maybe help her qualify towards that postseason. Yeah, de certainly in co in contention and in position to qualify at the moment. So we've just wrapped up the touch warm up, and the four ring circus is about to get started here. Getting a look at Regina Walton leading. Cornell off on beam. Big backhand spring layout step out. Very nice. And here we have our quad box back with Jessica Lynn about to get started for Brown. Just that your Chinko lay there, but very pretty in the air. Just to check on that beat jump to aerial connection, but hangs on to it. Yeah, that your Chinko layout starts out of that 975 compared to the full twisting your Chinko in that 995. Nice full turn there. And Lauren Holt getting started for Yale on bars.
nice gainer pike there to finish. Solid start for Cornell. Hits that straddle, Jaeger. Good bail to handstand. Would have liked her to keep a little bit more vertical there, but definitely keeps her momentum through her routine. And Zyra Gazdak getting things started on. And another twisting dismount for Jess, for Lauren Holt there for Yale on bars. Yeah, really cool. This will be Emily Ford for Brown. On vault. And a tuck through Tinkle Bowl, a little bit low on the chest on that landing, but nice control. Big front through to double back for Gazdek. I love Penn on floor. They have just such dynamic routines. Agreed. We just overturn that switch side. This is Gigi Sabatini for Yale. I'm gonna get started on bars. And Avery Bion up for Cornell on beam. Like we've got a bit of a waiting game on both vault and bars. Nice front toss there for Bion. And steps out. That's one tenth neutral deduction. So powerful. A handspring layout step out. It was a little off on landing, but hangs on to it. You know, she did go, and for Gazdak, you know, did go out of bounds. She's going to incur a deduction there, but solid start overall. And here we have Gigi Sabatini getting started for Yale on the bars. Sabatini in the all round tonight. Nice to Kachev straight to that bail. Would like to see a little more extension in her feet um, on that Tukachev skill, but good rhythm. A little short on that handstand. And the double tuck, but she sticks it, holds on, and she's got to be very happy with that. Nice. And Bion wrapping up on beam. Just a couple of hesitations here and there. I think she's got a super bright future for Cornell. Definitely. And this will be Lauren Kramer for Brown on the ball. Getting ready to get started. See her coach there behind her giving her some last minute cheers. And Brittany Harris there, the Oregon State alum. Fantastic college gymnast in her own right. And that your chinko pull there. Again, a little pike down on the landing and a hop back. But you know, that's that vault starts out at that 995, which will give her, you know, a higher starting position than the last two vaults. Absolutely. Really critical for those that two tenth difference between the Yurchenko full and the Yurchenko layout. Even the Yurchenko tuck, still a tenth and a half yeah, difference definitely. between those start values. And that's really I think what's kept Brown back a little bit on this uh, it in their team scores this year is that they just don't have all of those um, higher uh, value vaults. But, you know, they really need to just cleanly make it through their last few. And Alexandra Kiana here on beam for Cornell as Anna, Anna Kenefek gets started on be on floor for Penn. Just hangs on to that aerial. And this is Lily O'Coin for Yale on bars. Nice straddle Jaeger there. Angela Zing on vault. Very nice, Yurchenko full. Good position on the landing. Just a hop back. A nice double pike for Kenefek there. Really pretty handstands there for Lily O'Coin and a great dismount. And such a cool wow. dismount. Full twisting gainer off the end there. You know, just had that break in her aerial, but she's a gorgeous beam worker. I love that dismount, super challenging. Yeah. 
one and a half front full for Kennefeck. Really solid routine there. Zara Gazdak getting them started with that 9-5. You know, we saw that extra, that step out. And that's not only a tenth, but you also get deducted for what caused you to go out of bounds. So just had some extra power there. And this is Sophia Dewar on vault for Brown. Nice, Yurchenko full, the hop back. But really got that those nice dynamics, you know, yes. really superior dynamics, that height and distance, which is a big part of the evaluation of the score as well. Definitely, and getting started for Yale on bars will be Sarah Wilson, and she is a beautiful bars worker, really nice extension in her handstands. You're gonna wanna keep your eye on her. And Natalia Terrani getting started for Cornell on beam has gotten GEC Newcomer of the Week honors. Lovely to catch up to that bail. And this will be Julia Bedell on vault. Finishing out the brown rotation, nice pirouette. And a clean landing, very well done. She's been so solid for Yale on bars. I love to watch her swing. And Julia will also do that full twist in your chanko. Really, really nice. You notice how she gets great height in the air and keeps that straight laid out position just to hop on the landing. Sky Kiriko getting started for Penn on floor. Goes for that difficult switch half, Tarani on beam. Little bit off, but manages to cover it. Just that step back. You know, I've seen her be a little cleaner. Another athlete that I think has a really bright future at Cornell, and I love to see her going for those difficult elements like the switch half. Definitely. And that will wrap up Brown's vault rotation with a 48.675. Not quite as high as they may have wanted, but again, they don't have all of those high start values. Double back, a little extra slide back there. But she's so powerful. And you know, we were talking about leotards earlier, and this Penn leotard has so much school spirit that it's really very growing true. on me. Very true, it's a classic. Yeah, it's a very fun, really just like shows up nicely on camera and in the arena. Sarah Wilson, 9.85 for Yale on bars. It was a great routine. And this is Sherry Wang for Yale on bars. And Sydney Beers getting started for Cornell following two nine eights from Kiana and Tirani. Nice hop pirouette there. And the straddle Jaeger, very nice, good extension. So powerful in that front toss for Beers. A little short on that bail to handstand for Sherry Wang, but she does keep her feet together. Mm -hmm. And that full twist and double tuck, very well controlled. Wow, Andy Lee's is hype about that one. Yep. Really great landings yeah. for this Yale team on bars. You know, we talked about what they needed to do in that rotation, and they have gone five so far, and all five have been hits. Maybe they heard you through the mic there, Sam. Maybe. Not a single routine below 9725. And that Sydney Beers. Finishing up on beam here. Gainer full. By the way, she's got a double back off beam in the locker. She's training it, folks. It's on her Instagram if you want to go check it out. And Coach Melanie Stone told me they are waiting for uh, potentially going to debut that at USAG Nationals, but she is a powerhouse. Wow, that is a huge skill for NCAA gymnastics. Yeah, absolutely. Super excited to see that.
Sarah Kenefek getting started and check out this twisting two and a half punch front really beautiful she's a twister nice straddle leap work there too and Michaela Burton on beam for Cornell. This is Chloe DeJoy getting set to finish out the Yale bars rotation. Nice front double pull and check out this connection. Front aerial, side aerial for wow. Burton on beam. Cool. And a nice combination there for Chloe. She does that pike. Jaeger right into the bail. You know, a little bit of leg separation, but nice connection. She doesn't quite get that dismount, but another hit, and that was six hits for Yale on bars. Yeah, and she's an athlete that's really been growing this season in her inaugural season at Yale. Definitely. Burton, so pretty to watch on this event. Just the dismount left, one and a half. Oh, I, she could have just sunk her heels in. I feel like she had that stick, but she, just the front aerial, side aerial. I mean, who's doing that in college gymnastics? Yeah, nobody. In gymnastics, period. <laughs> so difficult. Love to see that from the Cornell team. And so that is wrapped on all events except floor. We've got two floor routines left and get ready because they are powerful, they are dynamic. This next routine is one of my favorites from the whole meet today. Absolutely. And what do you think, she's one of those athletes we were talking before really embodies artistry. Sam, you have a dance background. Tell us what artistry means in gymnastics. Absolutely. Well, for me, artistry means using your entire body from your face to your toes, from your shoulders to your wrists and your hands, using your whole body in your movements. It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different athletes, but I think that you've got to use every part of your body to perform. And she really does that. Agree. You know, we all, there's oftentimes the uh, misconception that smiling is what artistry is or pointing your toes is what artistry is, but it really is that commitment to the performance. And Definitely. that's something you're going to see from Marissa Lassiter. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I said from your toes to your face. <laughs> and that's the thing for me is, like, you've got to get your face into it. You've got to get your, your toes, your hands, everything <laughs> committed. And she will show us exactly what that means in a moment here. And of course, Penn having their home crowd here, although there is a good contingent from all of these uh, teams here. And I think we've flipped over to Cornell because they just went over 49 on beam. Wow, huge score for, for Cornell on beam. And I can confirm that Cornell has broken the record that they previously broke this season. Previously 49.025, 49.075. Cornell coming in hot in that third rotation. Amazing. Not a counting score below 9.8. Huge. And speaking of coming in hot, <laughs> get ready. And see what I said, those fingertips to those toes. Really difficult, front full, front tuck full. Such a performer. And there I said about that face. Such a powerful athlete. We'll see if she can control the landing on this double pike. Oh. 
just opens a little early out of that double pike. Yeah, and one of the things that I always think about in NCAA is a lot of athletes are afraid to dance full out because they think that they're going to not have enough juice for their tumbling. She does not have that uh, problem. She is going full out yep. and full out on the tumbling and the leap elements as well. Yeah, you know, I think she was just opening up, probably trying to stick that yeah. double pike. I've seen her uh, control that better, but as you mentioned, just such a dynamic performer on that event. And this is my moment to get on a soapbox, and Sam would love to know what you think. Only three-tenths of the 10.0 score on floor dedicated to artistry. I think it should be way more than that. I think so, too. It's such an important part of the performance and what makes floor the event that it is you know it's there's a of course there's your tumbling there's your leaps but there's so much in between those elements that i think that we should really have you know the the ability to score yeah i mean we've got 10 points to use and i really think that we could set up the code of points to utilize all 10 of those points a bit better yeah i i would definitely agree you know especially with a lot of athletes in ncaa right now moving to those two pass routines mm -hmm. You see so much more time for the dancing, mm -hmm. and I think that we should really be, you know, rewarding the athletes who are able to, you know, commit to their choreography mm -hmm. and really use their artistry um, because there is a lot more time for that. Mm -hmm. And coach, you just saw Coach Kirsten Becker there, Penn alum herself, just giving a few words, final words of encouragement to Emma Davies, and she's another athlete that's so powerful here. seven or better to take the lead back from Yale. Nice double pike, a little front slide on that first uh, or front foot, you know. I would hope the judges saw that and we'll take the deduction, but. Nice front lay to front full. Palestra is going wild for that one. Two double saltos, great height on those passes. Little leg separation in that front layout to front full, but she's so dynamic to watch. As I mentioned, Yale 146, 525. So we'll have to see what Emma Davies comes in there. Can they take the lead back from Yale? You'll have to come back, find out. You're watching College Gymnastics on ESPN+. Plus. the Palestra. It's the 2024 Ivy Classic. It's a tight race here. We've got Penn in the lead, 146-850. Yale, 146-525. Cornell coming off that program record, 145-9. Brown, 145-975. Sorry, flip the order of those last two, but really tight race. And 
you know, Cornell just what I what I was really impressed with with Cornell. They have athletes that have gone higher in there, but really every single athlete nine seven seven five or higher, including the score that they dropped. Uh, so really pretty routines there. Taking a look at Brown on vault here, Sam. Yeah, as we talked about, they have a lot of fulls, but not a whole lineup of these 995 start values. But they went through clean and hit their vaults. This is Julia Bedell here. You know, nice vault, hop back there. She scores a 9775. And here we have Yale on bars. And they were just stick machines. Really, really great for Yale on bars. 9725 was the lowest score for the whole rotation. Yeah, they really were dynamic. Something Coach Andy Lee had said that he was working on in the gym. Here's that Cornell beam rotation that I was talking about. Floaty back handspring layout step out there. Break their beam record. Check that out. Oh, Full twisting that. gainer off the end. Lots of variety in that lineup. And Penn. You know, Penn, not as high as I've seen them on other times. A couple of landing control issues on floor. Still, they go 48-9-5-0. Still good enough to keep them in the lead in this meet. And Emma Davies, 9-8-5 there. She's just such a powerful tumbler. Great way to close out that rotation. Getting a look at Yale here, warming up on beam. We're going to take a quick break here, and you, we'll come back for that final rotation. Come back and see who's going to take this Ivy Classic here on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back inside the palestra on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. Getting a look at Brown warming up on bars. We're coming in to our final rotation. Sam, this meet is flying by. We've seen some absolutely fantastic routines. Definitely. Really excited to see how this last rotation goes and see who comes away with the win. We saw the trophy before the meet, and I'll be excited to see who that goes home with. Absolutely. And Although these teams do compete in the Gymnastics East Conference, the Ivy League does not sponsor gymnastics. You better believe bragging rights are on the line here. Definitely. Getting a look at the Yale beam lineup. Yale having a fantastic meet. Shout out to my dad, by the way. Yale class of redacted, um, <laughs> who uh, is, uh, I know, tuning in right now and cheering for Yale. So we'll see if they can get that rotation off to a good start. Getting started with Cornell here on floor. Avery Bion here, such a fun routine. Nice. I double back there. And Hannah Strauss getting started here for Yale on beam. I love her dismount. Wait for that. Back handspring step out, back handspring double full. drop of that shoulder on the series, but she fights to stay on. Really would like to see her a little more patient after that series, and maybe she could have stayed away from that wobble. Nice connection there with the front aerial. Front aerial. And be on such a performer here as well. Switch leap, switch jump there. Nice split positions from Hana. Beyond fights to keep that in bounds. And Sophia Dewar getting started for Brown on bars. Back handspring, back handspring, double full. Just a step on that landing, but wow, is that a hard combination. Yeah, love that routine. And a nice landing there for Dewar. She does take a step back, which will be a deduction. Madison Perkins getting set for Penn here on vault. That step forward was crunched on the table, couldn't get the dynamic she needed to land with that chest up, a key part of that landing. Honestly, I'm quite impressed that she kept that to her feet. She didn't seem to get too much block off yeah, the table, and twister. she fought to keep that on her feet. Yeah.
and some changes to the Penn Vault lineup. So will be interesting to see some of those new additions or folks that we haven't seen in a while compete. I believe we're going to see Marissa Lassiter, who we haven't seen in competition on vault for several weeks. This is Gigi, Gigi Sabatini starting for Yale on beam. Cammie Whitaker getting started for Cornell on floor. 9.85 for Bion. Great start. And then 9.8 for Hannah Strauss. Good series for G. Sabatini, well controlled. Would have loved to see a little more extension in that straddle position. Last we're going for this full twist in Yurchenko. Wow, great job there. And McKenna Wiener for Brown on bars. Nice legs together on that bail. Great dismount for Gigi Sabatini. Stuck on that one and a half. And a clean routine for McKenna Wiener. And Whitaker just getting set for her last pass on floor here. Rudy to double stag. Nice height on that final jump. And this Cornell team is pumped. I love the energy in here. I really, it's so much fun to see this high level. These teams are one up in each other. Definitely. 9775 for Marissa Lassiter. So nice to see her really dynamic. Yurchenko full just couldn't quite get the landing, but. Sarah Kenefek will be up next for Penn on vault. Dewar 9 6 to start for Brown on bars, and Hannah Strauss 9 8 on beam. Sarah Kenefek. <laughs> I think she surprised herself with that one. <laughs> and that's, she held for an extra two gymnastics Yeah, she, there. Was, she was definitely shocked by that stick. Yeah. This is Emma Mangiacopri on beam for Yale. And kind of like, you know, really nice dynamics in her Yurchenko full, but I don't think I've seen her stick that all season. So no better time like the present. Definitely. Gigi Sabatini, 9-8 on beam for Yale. So a couple 9-8s to start them off. Oh, good fight there. She was really off to the side, and she was able to hold on with her toes. This is Liza Marcus getting started on bars for Brown. Nice handstand position. And Josie Moylan getting started for Cornell. Love that Rudy to lay out step out pass. Good handstand there for Liza. Oh, and I don't even know. She seemed to just have to come off there. I think she went for a pirouette and couldn't get all the way around. Sky Carico here. Nice piked gainer off the end for Emma. Really clean. Big full twisting Yurchenko for Carico. Just couldn't get the stick, but nice dynamics. And Liza getting started there. She gets the full pirouette to the double tuck and has to step backwards. She will be unhappy about that, but there were some really beautiful moments with those handstands. And she's got pretty toe point. Definitely. And this will be Ella Tashin, the freshman for Yale on beam. And I love her switch split jump in side position. Wait for that interesting element. Oh, big double pike there, just has to step out on floor. She was so close to the end, yeah. I thought she might have been able to hold on to yeah. it. Nice dynamics in that double pike though. You can see her laughing about her with uh, her coach there. 
head coach Melanie Hall in her fourth season as head coach at Cornell. And Ella Tashin mounting with that really nice mount. And Jordan Barrow, this is one of the athletes I've been so impressed with in her inaugural season at Penn, can really put this full twist in Yurchenko in the rafters. Big dynamics, not just the height, but the distance there. Beautiful series for Ella Tashin. And Yale and Penn going really toe to toe here. 9 8, 9 8, 9 8, 2 5 to start for Yale. Beautiful leaps there, extremely well controlled. And we have Lauren McEwen starting for Brown on the bars. She has that half pirouette to the Tapacha. Very nice. Good handstand work. And unfortunately, she just had to come off on that side aerial. Nice routine for Laura McEwen for Brown on bars. And here's that jump I was talking about, that switch split jump from the side. So cool. Alexandra Kiana here on floor for Cornell. And that fall from Ella Tashton will put the pressure on the last two beam workers for Yale. And big step forward there for Kirsten Belkoff. She's just got a huge Urchenko half. Yeah, nice stretch body position in that vault. I do think though that that means that Penn will have to will be able to drop the 9-6 from Madison Perkins. Yes. And this is Sarah Wilson who will get started for Yale on beam. She does a front tuck to a beat jump in this routine. Sometimes she doesn't do that beat jump, but we'll see what she does here today. Yeah. tumbling pass here. Nice control. Very good. Out of that front layout. And Maya Davis for Brown on bars. She has beautiful extension and toe point. See here in the Maloney right to the pack. Little leg separation on that pack. And a little Archie on that handstand. But such nice toe point. Nice pirouette. And a hop forward on that double tuck dismount. Some really great moments. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what more gymnastics she does for Brown. And Kiana you know, showed off some of those pretty lines on floor like she did on beam. And Cornell just all, we've seen such great performance quality. Really have to commend all four of these teams, but Cornell always a fun uh, group to watch on floor. And coming up next is Sydney Beers, who I think, you know, Julia Bedell is leading that race right now for the floor title with a 9925. This is an athlete who has scored 9925 earlier this season. This is Sarah Wilson for Yale on beam. Beautiful extension. We'll see that front tuck. At first, the full pirouette. And Sydney Beers getting started on floor. And here it is, that front tuck. Oh, and she holds on, on to landing. To no beat jump today. Mm -hmm. Double pike, nice. just a little foot adjustment. And this is Sophia Sokolowski for Brown, finishing up their bars rotation with a really nice release move. And 
Nice side aerial to see Sohn for Sarah. And the double tuck with that step to the side for Sophia. Brown, not their best of bars rotation, but a strong finish there. Yeah, great way to finish out that rotation. Oh, so close on that stick for the for Sarah's beam routine. Just a little more patient, but a great, great routine for her. And exactly what Yale needed to turn it around. Sydney Beers, big double back. She had a little foot adjustment on, on that first front, pass. front through to double back, but goodness gracious, is she a dynamic tumbler. Absolutely, I love the height that she gets on that double tuck. And also the dynamic performance. You mm -hmm. saw that fi final pose. Yeah. You couldn't see on the stream, but she was staring straight at the judges. Yeah. And Melanie Hall, you know, she's said she just has so many, she's one of those athletes, has so many tricks. Again, playing around with a double back for fun in the gym. I hope we see that at USAG uh, finals. But compared to Sean Johnson, I think that's a really apt uh, comparison. Absolutely. And this is Meredith Donovan, the last beam worker for Yale. Backhand spring layout, step out. And still have switch leap, and she, I think she was trying to connect mm. that so that she could do her leap series, but here's a beat jump to that straddle three quarter. Sydney Beer is 9.875, so Bedell is your Ivy Classic champion on four. Side Ariel holds on to it. She's really fighting for these skills. Caitlin Walsh, another big front through to double back. And just that step back on the dismount. She fought through that routine. She knew her Absolutely. team needed her to hit. And with that, Yale will not need to count that fall from Ella Tashjian. Caitlin Walsh to wrap things up here for Cornell. Some extra power coming out of that double pike. Just love the end of that routine. Yeah, she had a little extra power in that double pike. Extra power, not a problem that I was familiar with as a gymnast myself, but I've heard it's a difficult pro it's an, it's a good problem to have. Um, but some really dynamic tumbling uh, to wrap things up for Cornell there. Getting a look, Meredith Donovan score still on eval, but and has just just come through here. Looks like Yale 195-4. They will not catch Cornell 195-8. Again, these scores are unofficial, but looks like Penn will be taking the Ivy League Classic. This is this was a nail biter, Sam. Yeah, this was a great meet. Really strong performances from all four teams. Moments where we thought all four would have a chance at that title. And you know, congratulations to Penn. They really brought it home here at home. And you got, you've got some Yale Gymnastics alums in the house, proud of their team. We're going to take a quick break here. 
We're going to come back and wrap things up. You're watching College Gymnastics on ESPN+. Welcome back to College Gymnastics here on ESPN+. This was an absolutely thrilling evening of gymnastics. I can confirm we're having trouble hearing ourselves in the booth. These teams are so hyped. I can confirm that Penn has won the Ivy League Classic 195-8. Absolutely huge score for Penn. Yale really close on their tails. 195-4 and Sam, a program record for them. So exciting. Really good progress for this Yale team this year. Yeah, you know, and I think Penn and Yale were really, really evenly matched throughout the meet. Saw Yale jump out to that early lead after their best event on floor. And then Penn had some ha match that with a really strong beam rotation. Come back, they win 195-8. Cornell, they weren't quite up in that scoring threshold, but break their program record for the second time this season on beam. And, were so dynamic to watch on floor, weren't they? Definitely, and unfortunately, Brown just started out with that rough mm. rotation on beam, but they really brought it back on floor and coasted through the rest of the meet. And you know, that, that floor rotation was just something amazing to watch. Absolutely, and as we look at the all your all-around winners, we told you it was gonna be a tight race. Some absolutely fantastic athletes rounding out your top three, Sky Carico, 39-325. You know, I mentioned how much she has contributed to this Penn program, sets her career best, and was really fantastic wire to wire here. And actually sets a school record for the all around as well here. Unbelievable, congratulations to her. Sarah Kennefect, her teammate, 39-15. Again, just one of the, you know, I love watching her twisting form. She's just such a quick twister. We saw that on bars, we saw that on floor, fantastic. Sydney Beers didn't quite stick her vault. You know, there were a couple places she could have been cleaner, but still 39-1-5 for her, and gosh, she's a dynamic athlete to watch. And that's her fourth score of 39-1-5 or better in the last few weeks. So. She's cruising. As we look to vault, surprise winner there, Michaela DeFrancesco, sets her career high 9-8-2-5. Congratulations to her, sticks that vault. Ella Tashton, Sarah Kennefec, and Jordan Barrow all tie her for that. So we've got a four-way tie for five, four-way tie for first, almost as good as that world back when Madison Koshin <laughs> tied with a billion people. But nine, eight, two, fives, Ella Tashton, Sarah Kennefic, Jordan Barrow. I think what stood out to me about those vaults is really the superior dynamics that they got when you're seeing so many Yurchenko fulls in the rotation. Absolutely, and that stretch layout position. Mm. Sometimes you see that pike down from a Yurchenko full, and all those athletes really showed that stretched out position as they landed. And our Ivy Classic bar champion, very deservedly, Sarah Wilson from Yale. No surprise there. She showed superior form in her handstands and really beautiful dynamics on that dismount. Yeah, and has that huge Ray, Sky Carico, Lily O'Coin, Lily O'Coin setting her career high there as well. So future is bright for Yale Gymnastics, just a freshman, and Sky Carico, the, first, the number one and tied for second, those big Rays and Lily O'Coin really coming into her own as well. As we look to beam, Samantha Wu wrapped up an absolutely fantastic rotation for Penn. Penn takes number one and number two, Sam Wu, Sky Kiriko. Campbell Marr ties Michaela Burton for third with that 9.85, but 9.9 career high for Samantha Wu. She's your Ivy League Classic champion. Yeah, generally a great day on beam mm. for a lot of athletes today. Yeah, absolutely. Floor, Sam, you called it at the beginning. Julia Bedell, I mean, she drops that full in out of the sky. Yeah, just incredible, and a 9925, such a nationally competitive score. Really excited to see how the rest of the season goes for her. Exactly, no surprise here for me. Yeah, Ella Tashton, Sydney Beers round out your top three as they tie for second, 9875 there. These are athletes you're going to see probably battling it out at USAGs later this season. Definitely. 
And as a reminder, USAGs, those, that is the championship that is available to schools with seven and a half or less scholarships. So that's your Division II schools, your IBs, and service academy. So always a fun and underrated, in my opinion, meet to watch. This has been such an exciting evening of gymnastics. Really tight to the wire, didn't know who was gonna win, coming in the last rotation. Penn takes it, and it's we're gonna see these athletes battle out again at the GEC Championship, so make sure to tune in for that. For now, for Sam, myself, and our whole production team saying so long from the palestra where Penn is your Ivy League Classic champion. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus.